such a long way. Welcome back to Ginny Tickham's. Come with us and take a trip around Finn Andrew's mind. You and I come. Quiet here for the Vales. We were left with no news. So what was going on behind the curtains? We've been touring for ages, and so that was it was going to be our kind of okay. We're going to try and all have lives again and like buy some new like cutlery for the flat and stuff, like things you don't you wouldn't usually ever buy or have a need for. Um, so then we bought cutlery, and then you kind of have to. You have to stay there then to get some use out of it. So we just did that really. Just um, lots of eating and things. Just staying in one place. I kind of, you just start writing. And uh, after a while, I was just kind of bored with your own company. And then, uh, and then the, so the EP was, there may be like 20, 30 songs written for that. And then just they were scaled down into what the EP became. Which is why it's quite, quite a few more songs than you would usually expect on an EP. On to more intangible matters, was it 2010 opposed to artistic reasons? Does Finn need some time to process emotions and turn them into songs rather than just write directly as they unfold? I can do. I think for years I tried to do everything all at once and didn't see why you couldn't tour and, you know, and write and you're still living and you're still you know, a human being in the world when you're doing that, albeit a kind of tired. For a while I've, I've done that, I've managed to make that work, to, you know, just write in that way. But it'd been about eight, eight years of pretty solid touring with never more than like a month or two in one, in one place. And it just got to the point really where I, I, uh, uh, it seemed that that was the only way to go really, was to have a bit of time off and to just time off from touring or just to kind of have have some semblance of a, a normal life again for a while. Yeah, and it's been really good, you know, like doing the EP was good and it's kind of a little experiment. You know, now we're playing, we've done a few shows recently and it's been, it's been great to really uh, feel really in love with it again and not just feel like it's this thing you do all the time. And, you know. but I think we've gotten better because of it. Finn broke his traditional silence last year for a few weeks when he took on the task to keep an EP blog. His writings gave a peculiar insight about the human being, but the experiment was soon aborted. We asked him to give us his thoughts about this. I like to try... I like to <laughs> attempt to be a part of the modern world. And some things I really, you know, enjoy, like blogs. It's like, you know, you can't just be like, oh, I'll never try that. So there's some quite good things. I like the immediacy of it, and you can kind of communicate stuff very quickly and easily. I like that. But I'm just terrible at that um, kind of thing, kind of having, having to write and having to maintain. Um, you know, people getting upset if, they, if you haven't updated it in a while. And it wasn't very good with that pressure, really, to write things like that. And like Soph is amazing at it and I think really uses it to its best effect. So I, I kind of opted out really um, after a few entry. We'll see. I don't know. I think if we were on tour maybe it would be something you could do more. There's a lot more stories coming up then. But then again Soph's better at that anyway. So I think I'll just um, leave that alone. <laughs> it's just getting drunk and deleting things and weird little rants. I'm not sure. The troubles of the Brain EP marks the departure of the base from Rough Trade after almost 10 years. Still, it's produced by one of the signature producers of the label, Bernard Bata. We dig the beat to hear the story behind this. Oh, Bernard was just... He lives around here, so I probably shouldn't talk about him too loudly. But he's great. He's really, um, he did, he's really, uh, what, what was needed on this, I think, because I was, it was recorded mostly at home, um, with just me in the room and so I was quite confident about that at first and then I was like oh maybe it does sound a bit shit and so um, he was great he just he, he did what he always does it's great hearing the kind of point of the song and bringing that out and there's no uh, bad will with rough trade at all so it's, you know, it's um, 
it's nice to still be able to do things that are connected to badminton. Now. And to understand the other side of the coin, how's the Peach Beast experience been so far? Mm. Uh, it was great. It was really a surprisingly hard to mess up completely, which was good. It's good. It's, it was a little disappointing in that I was, I think, maybe overly optimistic. I kind of thought maybe we could just fund the whole next record from an EP. I think maybe that wasn't quite right, really. I think people, uh, EPs are a funny thing. So it was good. I'm glad I, I'm glad I tried it. I'd still, I'd like to keep it going, you know. Um, just everything's so expensive, you know. You need a, uh, that's why people have labels, I guess. You've got to, um, get a lot of people to pay. But we'll see. It's very freeing. It was very, uh, exciting. To go solve the latest lyrics by Finn, Daddy, when you were young, was it all this strange? We asked Finn how much has his family, especially his father, influenced him as an artist. Yeah, I mean, I feel that in my family. I feel there's a, um, you know, not just my dad, but a lot of people on that side, especially a lot of, um, a lot of old, like, horn players and things and that, and various musicians. It's nice for that. I know quite a few people with, you know, dads or whatever, who are musicians as well, and there is a nice uh, feeling of carrying on, kind of uh, being passed the torch, I suppose, you know, it's a nice thing. It's a lovely relationship to be able to have with a parent to have someone that, and you know, my mum's the same as well, you know, she, they always understand what you're going through, you know, which is, which is nice. Not everyone has that, I suppose, to be able to, be able to talk about things very frankly and, you know have them understand and, you know, offer you advice that's useful. I feel like I am would have been useless at everything else, whether he had been a musician or not. Um, so I probably would have become a musician in a, in a... Talking about what a man can leave behind, does Finn agree with Thomas Gray or Foscolo on tombstones? I don't know if anyone really thinks about that, like leaving things behind, there's never anything that's motivated me to make something. It's really just, um, it's really just wanting to make the most of the time that's in front of me, I suppose. I don't, um, it would feel very egocentric or something to care about what you uh, leave behind in that way. I don't know, everything's so. Temporal anyway, it seems. I don't know. Silly to think the songs will. Maybe Paul McCartney thinks about that. I don't know if he does. Yeah, I just don't like wasting time. I feel like when, I, when I'm not writing, I feel like I'm wasting my time. And I just, you know, it's what I enjoy most. And it's what helps me get through everything that... Uh, it's just useful for me. Finn seems to have a very instinctive way of writing. He delivers very strong and raw emotions through his songs. But how does the process really feel like for him? Well, it's a nice way to look at it. I don't know. I don't know if everyone works like that. I don't know. Maybe some people can consider what they're doing a lot more. I used to worry that I, I don't think about it enough, and that maybe I'm, I'm meant to have a kind of um. You know, like, I don't know, a lot of friends that went to art school and everything's always tends to be very conceptual and there's a lot of um, conscious brain power gone into bringing these things together in, in a certain way. And um, I always hated that stuff. I always hated that at school. I always hated um, thinking about things in that way. I don't know. It's just not, it's not something I'm capable of doing, it seems. I either write what just comes out or I, you know, don't write anything wrong. Is art a way to present oneself to the world? Maybe helping that kindred spirits will recognize us? There's plenty of things people can do in their lives that um, might help someone else out in some way or offer them some kind of comfort or something. So I don't, I don't, I don't prize being a musician. Uh, as you know, offering more than that, 
more of that than you know anything else, I suppose. But um, I just enjoy it. Uh, there's definitely been moments where I've thought of it like that when you're on stage in a strange town that you know had you just visited without a guitar. I feel like you'd feel a little alienated and unsure of yourself, and there's something you know amazing in that that you can you know, get up and play for people and, you know, the old um, kind of give and receive of that is a, uh, is a great thing and it can make you feel very um, part of something, I suppose, part of a, yeah, which is good, you know, for people like me that never, I get, you know, kind of grow up always never really being very part of anything. It's nice to feel like you've made this little uh, club, I suppose. Interviewing Finn and having him play for us was an absolute privilege. And he took it like a champ when we told him we weren't going to release him unless he played Kalagi before us. He obliged and got his freedom back. Unfortunately. So, to see who we've kidnapped next, just stay tuned to Jane Dickens. And until then, bye! bye.